I've lived in my tiny house for about five years. For about the last two years, my tiny house has been located in the city of Charlotte in someone's backyard. And then in August of last year, the city of Charlotte required that I move my house. So I had to relocate it to a farm that's about 25, 30 minutes outside Charlotte. You have some flexibility about what you can do in rural areas, more flexibility, I will say, than um, in the city of what you can do as far as you know, a tiny house and more so on a farm. But as I've said from the beginning, as one of the few black people early on in the tiny house movement is that rural areas being more accepting of tiny houses, that's just not the safest location for black people in the tiny house movement. So out in this area, it's isolated. It's 11 acre farm, it's in development or under development and just kind of up and coming. So I was the only person living out there. My safety became a concern for me. I did deal with some incidences of racism. and the weather. So it's an open field, no tree cover, so the wind comes through there. And it's, so it's scary just on a regular windy day. And then a couple of storms came through that got really scary for me. And, you know, I just grabbed my stuff and kind of left the house because I wasn't comfortable there. So I started thinking and had to make a, a decision based more on personal happiness. I still adore my house, but that's not the location that I imagined in my tiny house dream. You know, I'm a city girl, I wanna be in the city. I get my energy from the city. I felt isolated and kind of disconnected out there. And so I started looking for an apartment back in the city. It was a tough decision because, you know, adding an expense of an apartment when one of my major points for my tiny house was to reduce my ex expenses. So now I'm adding an expense, but I'm big on, you know, following your dream and, and dreaming new dreams when the dream changes and you need to do something different. So I got an apartment in the city of Charlotte and then the stay in place order went into effect. And so as that happened, the thing that just kept repeating itself in my mind was, this is exactly where I would want to be right now. I normally work from home. I have for the last 13 years or so. And I would say I'm really an introvert. So I have jokingly said that I feel like I've been practicing for this time period, this stay in place. But while I can see this as a break, there are others who see this as a storm and it's disconcerting for them. And then there are still others who see this as a hurricane and it's ripping things apart, their lives, the things that they're having to deal with. While many people are pushing and rushing to you know, to get back to normal. Now I think we really have to evaluate and reset what normal looks like. Because it's clear from what's been going on that the black community has been impacted far too much and for 
far too long or we've been impacted by the effects of structural racism. The health disparities for our communities. This virus is disproportionately taking black lives due to the compounded health problems and living conditions within our communities that don't allow for social distancing. The lack of access to quality food and adequate medical care within our communities, which all are due to structural and systemic racism. It's really way past time for these disparities to be addressed and for them to be resolved. We have to learn from this, you know, it, it just can't be a, a getting back to normal or going back to normal because now is the time that we have to challenge what has been the status quo for too long. It has to be, in my opinion, a permanent resetting of the current structures and the current systems. And the resetting has to be designed by the people who are actually being impacted and for the people who are actually being impacted.